Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yunyue Zhang, and I am a PhD student from King's College London. And I'm very happy to join the early career research event. And my topic is oral delivery of siRNA with milk exosome. And uh, firstly, let's start um, from the background. The small interfering RNA has attracted a lot of attention re in recent years because siRNA could produce efficient and specific gene silencing. Because when the siRNA get into the cells, the uh, the siRNA could uh, form the RNA-induced silencing complex, and then the complex could combine uh, with complementary a uh, sequence of mRNA, and then it the um, uh, and then it the uh, destroy of the mRNA and gets aim of gene silencing. So the siRNA has been applied. Um, or has potential for treatment of a um, lot of diseases like the ocular diseases, the cancers, the central nervous system disorders, and um, the inflammatory bowel disease. However, the um, siRNA application uh, also meets some challenges. The main limitation is the injection administration because um, as we all know, the injection is painful and uh, leads it leads to injuries and injection also needs skilled professionals. And most importantly, the injection may lead to uh, um, systemic toxicity and uh, the patients may lose of the response to the drugs. So the oral route um, for the siRNA application has become the most uh, convenient and well-accepted way. And um, especially for the diseases which the site of drug action is in testing or systemic. However, as um, uh, you know, the siRNA is a kind of nuclear acids, which is very sensitive to the harsh environment of gastrointestinal tract, like the enzymes or the acidic uh, environment. And also, it is very difficult for them to cross the biological barriers like the mucus layer, the epithelium, and basement membrane. So the siRNA needs protection and strategies to improve um, permeation of intestinal mucosa to enable the oral administration. Um, and the nanoparticle-based oral delivery system for siRNA therapy um, has been developing very fast in recent years, like some polymers, uh, liposomes with various ligands, and they can protect the payload, promote uh, mucosa penetration. However, they also meet some challenges like the immune responses, and it will take a very long time to um, evaluate the toxicity, and it is very hard and expensive for um, for for their mass production. So uh, some natural vesicles has attracted a lot of attention in recent years, like the exosomes. The exosomes is a kind of membrane vesicle secreted by cells, and they can be existed in blood, urine, or milk. And the basic function of the exosomes is um, the communication between the cells because they can deliver their cargoes to the recipient cells. And especially for the bovine milk exosomes, as we all know, it is very safe because they are from an uh, editable source and uh, there's um, so there's no immune response and the toxicity. And also the exosomes from milk are cost effective and scannable. And the previous study has uh, revealed that um, the milk exosomes could tolerate the digestion process. And there are some other um, advantages for the exosomes, like the small size for penetration of biological barriers and the slightly negative zeta potential, which is beneficial for lung circulation. And uh, their structure is uh, very similar to the cell membranes like the phospholipid bilayers. So they can be taken up by cells easily. 
Therefore, exosomes could be ideal non-carriers enabling oral delivery of siRNA. And now let's move to the results for investigating the potential of exosomes for uh, oral delivery of siRNA. Firstly, I used the ultracentrifugation to isolate the exosomes from the milk and use the, um, the, the DLS and the nanoparticle tracking analysis to evaluate um, their sizes. And their sizes are both around 1,000, uh, sorry, 130 nanometer. And then I used the Western blot to identify the protein markers um, of exosomes like the um, CD81, CD63, and TSG101. So um, we can, um, which means the ultra centrifugation could, could isolate the exosome successfully, and the exosome meets uh, the standard of the sizes and the protein markers. And then I used the intestinal calculator to uh, cells to evaluate the cell uptake of exosomes. And uh, both for the undifferentiated and the differentiated COC2 cells, as we can see from the graph, the exosomes had efficient uptake by COC2 cells. And uh, then I um, measured the exosome permeability through COC2 monolayer. Um, firstly, I cultured the cargo to cells in the trans wheel, and during the culture in the trans wheel, the cargo to cells will differentiate the um, like the tight junctions, the crepes, and the villus. So the cargo to molar layers could mimic the intestinal epithelial barrier, and then I use the TER to measure the the resistance of the cargo to molar layer, which could reveal the uh, integrity of my molecular layer. As we can see from the graph, after 20 days, the resistance got stable, which means our molecular layer has uh, been got intact and it's ready for the experiment. And then I want to know the, and if the exosomes um, as my samples could damage or affect our uh, cargo tumor layer. So I measure the resistance before um, and after adding my samples. As we can see, there's no difference between, uh, uh, there's no difference before ending my exosomes and, uh, um, and uh, three hours after ending the exosomes. Therefore, the exosomes didn't damage the cargo tumor layers. And then uh, for the permeability experiment, the bisolateral amount of exosomes uh, was increased with the time. So, which means uh, exosomes possess uh, ability to permeate through the cargo tumor layers. And then I um, used the transfection ray agent to load the SIR into exosomes and the encapsulation efficiency could uh, reach around uh, 30%. And then I also use the cell uptake to measure the um, if the uh, exosomes could help the siRNA get into the cells because the naked uh, siRNA or the siRNA alone cannot be taken up by the cells. But we can see uh, with the help uh, with the help of exosomes, the siRNA could be taken up by the cells efficiently. And uh, I also use another method to load the SI into exosomes. The, uh, it's the calcium chloride plus heat shock method. And the capsulation efficiency has reached uh, uh, around 16%. And uh, it is worth uh, to mention that the cell uptake of <clears throat> siRNA loaded exosomes um, was much higher than uh, siRNA alone. So um, the loading of siRNA into exosomes could enhance the siRNA cell uptake. And um, I will summarize some of my uh, results so far. Firstly, the exosomes could be isolated from the bovine milk by ultracentrifugation. 
and uh, the cell uptake and uh, permeability evaluation uh, demonstrated that the exosomes possess the potential to transport through the intestinal epithelial model. And then the siRNA could be loaded into exosomes by two methods, and the loading efficiency could reach um, 30%. And finally, the low loading of siRNA into exosomes could enhance the cell uptake compared with uh, siRNA alone. And um, and so far, and and uh, I am also doing some um, some other work work in process, like I am doing the evaluating the of the permeability of siRNA loaded exosomes. Um, through the cocotumular layers and uh, also uh, evaluating the stability of siRNA loaded exosomes during the uh, di digestion. And uh, finally, I want to thank my supervisors, Dr. Drita and Dr. Maya, and my colleagues, and, um, thank, uh, and thank the British Society for Nanomedicine uh, providing me this opportunity to have this talk. And thank you so much. I I'm happy to take any uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yongyu. It's a, a really interesting talk and a really start some very exciting possibilities. So we, we have a couple of um, questions coming in. So um, the first one is, how do you characterize your exosomes after you've done the ultracentrifugation? Uh, carry Christ. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I used uh, the the DOS um, to measure the size, um, the uh, and the zeta potential, and I also uh, use the nanoparticle tracking analysis mm. to uh, measure the size and also the yield, and uh, then I use the Western blot to identify the. Um, the marker proteins on my exosomes to identify, uh, yes, yeah, identify the nanoparticles I isolated are the truly uh, exosomes. Mm -hmm. And then there's a couple of related questions. You showed two different loading methods for the sRNA, and mm -hmm. the, these resulted in different levels of uptake into the target cells. Yeah. Do, do you have any explanation as to why? the calcium chloride method gave much better uptake than the um, the other method of loading? Um, yes, yes, uh, because I, I am also trying to find out the reason why the, uh, why, why the calcium chloride uh, plus heat shock method has a much higher cell uptake. Um, but um, I think maybe it is because uh, calcium is a cationic um, cationic molecular, which could help the um, help the exosomes get into the cells. But um, yeah, but it is a good question, and I am also trying to find out the reason. And then a, yeah. a couple of more related questions: What's the scalability of the the process for loading the exosomes? So you know, if you show that it works well, could you scale that up? And would they need to be made fresh every time? Would you need to load them with sRNA fresh every time, or could you store them after you've loaded them? Um, yes, um, and every time I loaded the uh, sRNA into exosomes, I can store, um, and so far I have storage, I have storage it um, about um, up to, up to three weeks, I think, and there is no no problem and no difference uh, between the uh, fresh one and the storage one. But I haven't do any longer stock like a uh, longer stock like uh, like one month or half an uh, half a year. So yeah, so I, I think I will do do it later. Yeah. And just, just one final question. There are a few more questions on the chat board, on the Q&A, but they're very technical. So I'll let you dig into that afterwards. But I'd just like to finish okay. with, you, you've got a, a huge source of your exosomes. So you can get thousands of liters of milk. So that's fantastic. You know, often we're working with 
liters or tens of liters from tissue culture media. But what, what kind of yield of exosomes per liter of milk are you getting? Um, let me see. Uh, uh, um, uh, I think I can get about uh, one, uh, about one uh, microgram from one uh, 0 0.5 0 .5 microgram uh, of the exosomes um, from uh, 20 milliliters milk mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and uh, the and the uh, and the uh, and the amount of the exosome was identified by the BCA protein mm -hmm. uh, BCA uh, BCA protein um, measurement and about 0 0.5 my my sorry 0 0.5 milligram per uh, 20 milliliter milk yeah so sorry. Really, really good yields and, and like I say an, an inexhaustible source of exosomes you yeah as much yeah milk supplied in as you want fantastic I think it's it's a great concept and as you say the we, we as humans we tolerate um, bovine exosomes really well Thank you very much.